Howdy folks, thank you for taking the time to watch Knowledge Transfer, a climbing film. Before getting started, it's important to chat quickly about the dangers of climbing. Rock climbing, whether done with ropes 300 feet off the ground or without ropes 6 feet off the ground, is an incredibly dangerous activity. If this film inspires you to try it out, which we would be stoked if it does, please seek out a professional guide so that you can safely experience the adrenaline rush while ensuring the least amount of risk possible. Guiding services can be pricey sometimes, but your life is priceless. We are seasoned and trained climbers, so while we may be crazy sometimes, we're also as safe as possible. Enjoy. In the night while my body slept in my bed My mind was running through the woods instead 100 miles an hour in the fast lane 100 miles an hour in my head And vagabond dreaming takes me through the night Sipping whiskey by the river, living out of sight 100 miles an hour in the fast lane Hundred miles an hour toward the light See the curve in that river's bed And I look at you when I see my friend One hundred miles an hour in the fast lane A hundred miles an hour to the end Cherokee drop And in the morning when the sun does come One hundred miles an hour in the fast lane One hundred miles an hour in the fast lane One hundred miles an hour to the right Let's go Nice, let's go. Nice. Yeah. Woo.
My name is Jeremy Sable. I'm a geophysics student here at TCNJ, and I'm addicted to rock climbing. I'm not sure if it's the adrenaline, drive to explore the unexplored, or just adventure with my best friends, but there's just something about it that keeps me coming back for more. Climbing the area focuses down to a couple of locations, but two stand out more than others. Ralph Stover State Park for its friable mudstone crimps and slippery edges, and the Tammany side of the Delaware Water Gap for its cryptic roofs and crazy exposure over Route 80. I'm extremely grateful for New Jersey climbing, because it has truly shown me that if you love something enough, you will do anything to keep participating in it, even walking along the side of the highway. As a physics student, there's no better way to get involved with research than to do some that includes computer modeling along with roped access to cliffs. After speaking with my advisor, Dr. Shannon Graham, we decided it would be really cool to implement a software called HSELF Metashape Pro into a study of modeling cliffs at Ralph Silver State Park to possibly put metrics on hazards. After lots of trial and error, we got a model that we were pleased with right before the end of the semester, but decided it was best to carry this project over into the spring for another model to notice any change from the winter. Learning from our mistakes, the early spring trip included more climbers, better gear, efficient setups, and lots of fun. So one, one time over the summer of 2022, um, it, it really, it, we were at Stover climbing. Uh, it was Matt and, and a couple other people. And we were hiking past this one section um, called the practice face. And, and for those of you that don't, aren't familiar with Stover, the practice face is, it's kind of like the hangout section of, of top roping, really. It's, it's the easiest spot or one of the easiest spots to set up a top rope. So with that accessibility, uh, more people are gonna be there and, and there's more routes, there's more, just a big hangout spot um, at the bottom of this. And as we were hiking past this practice phase, we saw a pretty large area of fresh rock fall. Um, and you know, we've, we've been there enough it, at, during this time frame to know, you know kind of a vague area of time when that rock fall happened. And it happened in an area that's, that's very predictable. And so, it, um, just a little bit of geology terms, this, this area of the practice phase, it sits next to a chimney. And this chimney, um, it, it's collecting water from up top, from uh, runoff from the road. So when people are hiking up top, which is very common, it's a very, very, very popular state park. When people are hiking, they're packing down the soil. Um, and this soil compaction is actually killing trees, right? So, the, 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 it's called root rot. It's, it's really when the, the soil's not absorbing the water anymore and the, it's not absorbing these nutrients. So this, these roots will rot and they'll die. And when the roots rot and die, the trees will die. And when you have this problem, more water will run off into this chimney. And with the water runoff in the chimney, when the winter comes around, it, it's this, this water will freeze and it's called frost wedging. So fr with frost wedging, um, the, the rock is spreading and it's, it's increasing these cracks to a point where rock fall is going to occur. And if you have this anthropogenic, which is a human cause, if you have this problem that's caused by humans of this water runoff, causing more frost wedging, which is going to cause this, these, these rock falls in the most popular part of the cliff, it, it kind of brings attention and says, well, what can we as in climbers, you know, people who are there the most, what can we do to help prevent, study, and, and really just get an idea of, of when these will occur, how we can kind of divert the water maybe, or just find alternate ways um, to study this area. And that's where, that's where the research came along. And that's where, uh, as, a, as a sophomore in the fall semester, I went to Dr. Graham, Shannon Graham, and I, I asked her, I said, look, I wanna do some research on Ralph Stover, and, and I wanna study these cliffs, I want to study where where this rock fall is going to occur and how we can can kind of prevent not prevent but predict it. And she said it's a great idea, and and she pointed me towards this modeling software. And so we use this modeling software to model these cliffs. And having these cliffs modeled, it gives people from all over and any time a way to to observe. So if you model the cliffs before a winter and after a winter, these 
the data that you collect can show the, the rate of change within the cracks. It can show you the volume of water collected or um, the, the amount of frost wedging in, in certain areas of, of greater volume of water. And this is, this is big because if there aren't rates of, if there aren't movement of rock, then there's no reason to, to put forth a lot of effort in studying this. So we pretty much just uh, fixed six lines to climb and wrap uh, and ascend the ropes to put up GCPs, which are ground control points. All right, so uh, pretty much to measure uh, all our data and all our GCPs, we use a couple different types of uh, devices and tools. The first one is going to be just a normal tripod. Uh, the thing that makes this tripod really nice and convenient is we have the, we have the three legs that go out uh, to keep it at a nice equal base. But we also have some little level, bubble levels on the actual tripod. And the thing that's nice about these is you can kind of tell if, if our, our other measuring tools are, are level and if they're pointing in the right direction, along with this little scale here, which is for, for angles. So we're going to be using uh, this laser measuring device then that mounts onto the tripod and the the real the usages of the laser measuring device is it sends a laser uh, a pulse out to whatever you put it on and that that pulse is sent back and it, it's able to tell how long that this this laser is gone for and it can take that measure that that time and that data and it can find out how far it is so we use meters um, to measure it's just easier for the software and in this, in this case situation, we plan on picking our origin, stay, uh, putting the tripod with the laser measuring device at the origin, and then measuring to each point. So we're gonna measure to each, every single point, get the distance in, in meters. And then with the distance, it kind of tells us a, a lot more accurate too than if we just took a tape measure and measured. You don't have to worry about the, the slack that's in the line. You can just go straight to the point which is really convenient. Uh, another tool we use is the um, Klein measuring. It's, it's a digital angle gauge, so pretty much we're gonna be using it to measure the dip. So we're gonna be measuring if it's a positive angle, negative angle, or if it's just like a neutral zero uh, equilibrium angle. And this is super useful because you don't have to worry about placing your phone or placing a, a, you know, a really new fancy uh, level you can just use this nice little Klein tool device and it's really convenient it's really easy and we're going to measure the dip of every single point so it could be negative positive every single one and then lastly uh, we just use the common iphone uh, all iphones come with a compass app which is really really convenient especially if you're in the woods so the compass we use and we're going to use for the azimuth so you were going to take the the phone, we're going to place it right on top of the laser measuring device, and we're going to measure with a, a nice flush edge. We're going to measure what um, azimuth the, the laser is at. So we're going to go, you know, 20 degrees to the northwest or 20 degrees, you know, so it just is really convenient uh, for that measurement as well. And the software we use, AGSoft MetaShape Pro, will take all these softwares all these uh, data points and it will place it into one and it will help build the model um, of the, the chimney which is what we're really concerned about. So pretty much the bulk of the work we just did though uh, surrounded around accessing different parts of the cliff to put up these GCPs. So without having the knowledge of the ropes, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get up there to put up uh, these, these GCPs, these ground control points. And they're really important because they help us set an XYZ coordinate plane of the cliff in the area. And this XYZ coordinate plane is, is fully measurable. So we can measure from all different points on the model that we built uh, to each of these points. So it's really helpful. And we can measure these points over time and see the change of growth. So, you know, it's, it's right now it's March. So we could come back in May and see maybe a little late weather in, in the winter, cause a little freeze and thaw, which, uh, through the cracks and can measure that with the model and with using these GCPs, so really helpful. A main focus of why we want to do a little bit of studying at Stover um, is we can see this water coming down right here. Uh, right now it's actually running pretty low, so it's not that big of a problem. 
Uh, but as as the spring kind of picks up and as the water starts to run more, this whole area can fill up with water. And why that's a problem is, you know, when, when winter season rolls around and when the temperatures get really low, uh, this will freeze and it will it really will develop frost wedging. Um, so frost wedging is just that splitting of the rock. And as this freezes and melts and freezes and melts, it, it expands its chimney. And you can see here a lot of this this is all fresh rockfall. So the fresh rockfall is dangerous, especially to climbers like us. We're always, people are always here hanging out, climbing. So you're mixing rockfall with the people that are just hanging out here. It's not a good mix at all. So we wanna you know, kind of get some data and get some info on how fast is this changing? How fast is this chimney growing? Um, what this chimney means for the rest of the phase, along with what does this chimney mean for just this area specifically too. So. We can study the volume of the water, where the water's coming from, how wide of a flow the water has, uh, along with the size of the rockfall, the size of the chimney, uh, and it really just, it, it's kind of getting, taking the initiative to find some data. As you can see in these two images here, the one on the left is of spring 2023 and the one on the right is of fall 2022. So looking at the difference, there really is no difference. The measurements are about the same. Um, obviously incorporating some error into it, we can't really tell how exact this is, but with the, the devices, measuring devices we used and the technique we used, these measurements are clearly um, showing that there really isn't any change in this section of the chimney. This is a perfect example of what this software can do and what you can, you can compare um, like in this case, before the winter and spring and after with precipitation um, and the fr freeze thaw cycle. So it's interesting to have data on this, um, but there is still a lot to do and a lot of potential in what you can do. After processing data from the spring trips to Stover, it just seemed like we were trying to do too much too soon with too many square meters of rock. The model came out patchy, and as we were hoping, due to a couple factors like the lighting, instead of accepting the defeat of fighting a final boss that was way out of our league, we decided to change focus a little bit and try something new. That's when we came up with the idea to model a much smaller and more manageable objective, which is a collapsed ramp midway up Mount Tammany's approach trail in the Delaware Water Gap. We had noticed its collapse a couple weeks prior, leaving boulders the size of large refrigerators dangling f above the highway. Additionally, with, with it having the ease of access, especially without the need of ropes, we decided to give it a go. It took a significantly smaller amount of points, photos, and measurements, but the model came out much better than expected. Being able to connect the software and processes between Stover and the water gap was definitely the biggest takeaway from the research, especially because it proves that this can be applied to anywhere across the globe, especially the climbing areas. It would be really interesting to see what they're able to do with this kind of research and what they're able to do with this kind of modeling in, in future applications. The overall research experience was filled with failures and successes, but the fun we had and things we learned were well worth the work. And let's not lie here, we had an excuse to take time to get outside, dangle from some cliffs, and spend great time with each other in some of the most beautiful places on the East Coast.